Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We begin today talking about baled crop residue as another option for feeding your cattle this winter. Let's kick things off today with Dr. Paul Beck. This is one of those situations that we get into every, you know, so often when you get in droughts and get short on hay. Um, you know, for the most part, our crop producers would rather turn that residues back into the soil and get the nutrients and the organic matter back into the soil for their next crop. But when it becomes a value to, as a feed resource, whenever we're short on hay, the crop producers are willing to go ahead and bale that up and, and ship it. When we've seen a lot of truckloads of these crop residues coming in from our, our cropping areas into Oklahoma for use as a livestock uh, feed to get us through the winter. And they make a pretty decent replacement for hay. Um, most of them are, are fairly low quality, um, but there's a range in quality depending on the crop and depending on the conditions whenever they were baled and, and harvested. And let's talk a little bit more about that and give some guidance to our viewers. Not all of these crops when they're baled or this, the crop residue when it's baled, they're not all created equal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whenever I, I think about straws, stovers and stalks, you know, they're, those are usually fairly low quality. So wheat straw is something most of us in Oklahoma are familiar with. Um, it's, you know, the aftermath after we harvested a, a, a wheat uh, or, uh, you know, could be any kind of small grain. They're usually about four and a half to 5% crude protein and 45% TDN. Uh, pretty easy to remember, you know, they can be, a, you know, depending on weeds and some other contaminants in there, they may be a little bit higher in quality than that. So there's a range in that. Um, if we look at corn stalks, uh, they're a different appearing crop. Um, they're still there about four and a half to 5% crude protein and, and right in there in the mid 40s as far as TDN or digestibility. Um, but then when we look at, at Milo Stover, the aftermath from a grain sorghum uh, crop, you know, it could be, you know, up over five to seven percent crude protein and, and over 50 to 52 or, or, or so, 55 percent TDN. I've had some uh, samples come back to, to be fairly good quality. So those lower quality, the corn stalks and the wheat straws, uh, Soybean uh, residue is another one that we would think would be higher quality because it's a legume. Uh, it's actually fairly low quality as well because of mostly what's left over is the, the soybean stems. Um, all those take a, quite a bit of supplement to, to meet the requirements of a just a lactate or a gestating cow. You now that cow with really low nutrient requirements. Uh, they're going to need about 50% TDN and, and about 7% crude protein. So even, even that real low nutrient requirement cow is going to need some supplement to go along with that uh, stalks or wheat straws and that type of product. When we look at the Milo Stover at, you know, 7 to, you know, 8% uh, crude protein and 50 to 52% TDN, you know, that will meet the requirements of that gestating cow. So it's, it's actually a fairly nice product. Um, you know, there's still some green leaf material and some um, green stalks in, in that. So it makes a, a, a decent cow hay or, or, or roughage for, for a cow going through the winter. When we start moving into lactating cows, if we have fall calving cows uh, or move closer into our spring calving, you know, time frame, those cows requirements are vastly higher. So all of those products are going to need a lot of supplement to meet those, that cow's requirements. And it could be up to about 10 to 12 pounds of a uh, supplemental feed to mat that match those requirements. So it sounds like it's really important. It always is, but especially when you're uh, considering this strategy to get that hay tested. Yeah, you know, the hay test is one of the, the most cost effective ways to design a winter feeding program. And it's a very small investment relative to the overall cost of, of that uh, nutrition program for your cow. So for 15 to $20, we can, can get a sample 
and we, we need to sample every field of, of hay or, or any of these products as, before they come in so that we know what we're getting and know what we're buying. But, you know, sample 10 to 15 percent of, of the, the, the field or at least 15 to 20 bales to get an adequate representation of what's out in that field. And, you know, at minimum, we need to know the fiber levels the crude protein and, and the digestibility or the total digestible nutrient content of that roughage source. You and the team have covered this topic in the recent Ranchers Lunchtime series and of course your, your newsletter. Yes, we um, had Mary Drunoski, she's a, a scientist out of University of Nebraska-Lincoln, uh, uh, years of experience feeding these crop residues because you know that's where a, a lot of these are coming from and, and you know dealing with the grain sorghum and corn stalks and, and soybean residue. She presented uh, a couple of weeks ago, November 17th, on our Ranchers Thursday lunchtime series. Um, we did a webinar on that. And then we also had a, a article in our newsletter that I wrote uh, based on that presentation, talking about these different qualities and, and, and how to best use those uh, products to feed our cow herd through the winter. And you really kind of have to sit down and map it out. So the county extension office, your local ag educator is also a great resource to, to map it out as well as that forage test, right? Absolutely, go to your county agent and have them help you get the sampler probe and, and what you need to get your uh, sample analysis done. And then they can sit down with you and help you plan out your winter feed program and, and try to match the, you know, nutrient requirement of your haze that you have available to the requirements of your cows and, and what supplements will fit uh, for these different periods throughout the winter. Okay, Paul, great information. Thanks a lot. And for a link to the resources we just talked about, just go to sunup.okstate.edu. Another reminder that you can receive discounted forage and water testing through your OSU local county extension office between now and the end of the year.